now for your listening pleasure, here's Polizzi and Rose, covering the week of media, marketing, and digital content news. This old marketing. Take it away, boys. Hello, my friends. This is Robert Rose. And welcome to episode number 342 of This Old Marketing for September 22nd, 2022. And with me, as always, my good friend, my colleague, and a guy who technically did move up one spot in line to be King of England, Mr. Joe Polizzi. <laughs> that was a good one. I Yeah, I like that I, one, that, right? You, you were working on that one. I, you know, people don't appreciate how much you work on the opening because they think it's it's just a brief amount of time but you agonize about the opening all week i know this this is a big deal to you you know here's the thing as as i used to say about the old openings that we used to do they either come in 30 seconds or it's all week (laughs) you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's like i there, there is either something that is so obvious, and this one was pretty obvious, to be honest, because I just thought, oh, we got to do something about the queen. Um, or it, it's, you know, I'm trying to find something that's, you know, <laughs> somewhat in pop culture, but, uh, you know, is is funny. Um, and, yeah, it's, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's very difficult, especially when there's no news. That's the, that's the, that's the hard part. So, so here's what I don't get about... The whole you know I I understand how many places in England specifically shut down for the day you know and then multiple days around it. But when here's what I don't get: you have so many people coming to one location, but you but everything's closed, so you can't like I don't know how did that work because all the places shut down. <laughs> but you yeah, what if you want a cup of coffee? You want some. You need some food. You're waiting in line. You want, but it's cold. Well, you're supposed to be mourning. You're supposed to be. It's 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 a week of mourning. Do you know mourning. how hard it you're is to mourn on an empty stomach? Is very yeah. difficult. <laughs> well, not everything shuts down. I mean, let's be clear. They 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 do keep things open. They 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 are a functioning society. <laughs> I, I talked. To, I talked to some people that basically were talking about like a <laughs> you bank know a guy. House. I, I know, know a guy. guy. <laughs> I'm not going to I'm not going to talk I, I would talk with a guy on the day yeah. who was yeah. living in England. <laughs> Some of my time. best friends are English. <laughs> exactly. I have I have friends outside of people in Los Angeles and Yeah, of course. And they yeah. said that it's just very hard to get along. I think they actually shut the water off too. It was it's really No, they uh, did shut the water off. <laughs> you don't know. You, I, I, you, you don't think know. You do. Neither of us know. <laughs> you only think you know. You don't know. Uh, in uh, in more positive news or negative news, uh, yes. I'm going – we're recording this Thursday morning, the 22nd. I'm yeah. going to that's right. the Steelers-Browns game tonight. That's – well, I'm not sure that's better news. <laughs> I'm not either. I'm not either. Yeah. And uh, I have to put – I've had a few people reach out to me wanting to know what I thought of last week's festivities, uh, the, oh the my Browns gosh. home opener, if you will. And yeah. for those – okay, so there's a lot of people that listen to this that aren't football fans, but but some expect us to talk about NFL. I won't, Indeed. I have to put this out there. I have yeah. been – a Cleveland Browns fan. Let's see. I'm 49. So probably for 44 years. Something around that. And, of course, there was a short period of time that there were no Browns, which was total, right. you know, yep. that's a total Cleveland Browns thing, too. But in that entire time, the most Browns thing that has ever happened has happened this year. The first Browns thing is that they went out and paid the most money, guaranteed money ever, to somebody who is probably not going to play this year. And if he does play this year, it probably won't make a big impact. For things that I don't even want to talk about character and all this stuff are very questionable that have put Cleveland Browns fans in a horrible position, in a horrible light to the nation. And I feel... So that's the first Browns thing that has happened this year. The most Browns thing. The second thing is, which I probably will put first now, is that disaster 
that I was able to witness firsthand as we were celebrating our 13 point lead. You know, we blew the extra point, 13 point lead with a minute and 22 seconds left in the game. Now, you would think, Robert, that the game was in hand. That's right. Right? Because you in would. every other game in the history of the NFL, the game has been in hand. In the history of the NFL. <laughs> That's So you can't get any more Cleveland Browns than what has happened. And I did. I still... I have to go to this game today to to get rid of the bad spirits because at least if they let's say that they lose or whatever at least it's better than what I just went through I can't imagine a worse situation than sure. what Well it's I a palate saw. cleanser for sure yeah it'll be a palate cleanser you know no matter what happens but you know for those of you by the way who are wondering what Joe is talking about basically on Sunday last Sunday uh the Cleveland Browns uh were winning by 13 points. 13 points. With one minute and a little bit and of And 22 time. seconds left. Yes. yes. Left in the fourth quarter by the end of the game. And subsequently, somehow, <laughs> left one of the offensive players wide open, who scored a very fast touchdown, and then lost the onside kick, and then subsequently let the team march down within about 40 seconds and score... He had another touchdown. That's that is correct. So, that that, that is so absolutely correct. It is. I would argue with you, and I would say the whole quarterback thing. That's not the most Brownsian thing on. That's that's not that's not the Brownsy thing. That's there are a lot of teams that do stupid crap like that. Washington Redskins do stupid stuff like that. Um, the oh well now they're not. Who's the, the Redskins? Redskins? Is this a team in the, the NFL? Yeah, right. I don't the, <laughs> right, exactly. They're the Commanders now. Sorry, they're the Commanders. The Commanders. I like but Washington football the, team. I liked it. I I, I, I thought it. the Washington football team was a much better name. That was great. Anyway, yeah. the you know the Dallas Cowboys used to do stuff like that, but they don't anymore. the The Brownsy thing is 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 the is losing a game. 13 point. I mean, you know, because there's that you even you guys even have a name for it, right? There's the fumble at the goal line. And then there's the, you know, there's all these things that you guys have names for like moments in games when Browns have snatched, you know, loss from the jaws of victory. And by the way, whenever uh, CBS or Fox or who's ever doing the game that week, and especially when we're playing Denver or it's an important game, they'll always yeah. bring up. And lest we not forget the multiple horrible mess ups from the Cleveland Browns over the years, 86, 87, <laughs> Browns, right. 95, 94, what, you know, when, when Modell moved in the trucks to move the team overnight right. to Baltimore. There's, uh, yeah. You know, what's, you know what the whole thing is about the defense breaking down and whatever? The sad thing is, and this is why Nick Chubb feels so horrible, Nick Chubb running back for the Cleveland Browns, ran it in with the minute and 30 left and put us up by the 13 points. If Nick Chubb goes down on the one-yard line, we win. They're out of That's timeouts. Right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, basically, it's over. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyways. Yeah. How's your Cowboys? They won. Uh <clears throat> yes, they did. That you know, so the uh, the Cowboys is honestly the opposite side of that coin because they walked in extreme underdogs to the Super Bowl appearing uh, Cincinnati Bengals with a backup quarterback and a hurt offensive line, and everybody expected them to lose, and they walked out of there with a victory. And it's uh, it's a new day in Dallas, so we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens over the course of the next couple of weeks without our quarterback. But yeah, it's uh, it it was a nice weekend. You know what the so here's my quick take on the future of your team. Uh, I have no uh -oh. experience or intelligence to say any of these <laughs> things, but I wanted to mention that when the when the Cowboys a few years ago were really 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 good, they rode the running game. And then, yep. and then they accentuated that with, with just superb timed passes. And then Dak had that amazing season, right? And just and yep. then they put everything on Dak's shoulders, and they've really – and you could say the diminishing skills for Elliott, I don't care. But the fact that you've got Elliott and Pollard in the backfield, you've got a formidable 
one-two punch there, and they've gone away from that so much so in many games, and you know this, it's three to one, four to one ratio from for passes to runs. And that's not winning yep. Cowboys football, in my opinion. Maybe yeah. what happened to Dak, and Dak will be back at some point, was a good thing because it gets you back to, to the core of this team. That's all I it may be. Say. It, may, it may be. That's, there's a lot of people that are predicting exactly that, that this will, this will uncover, you know, the having to cover for a, you know, and, but, you know, I mean, Cooper Rush has proved adequate uh, as a, a game manager backup quarterback. So we'll see about that. But he, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see, you know, because they did exactly what you just said to, to win the game. I mean, they, they really rode the running game and, and the play action then came off of that. So anyway, yeah, it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to jinx it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic, as they say. Well, my prediction for tonight's game, of course, when people listen to this, it'll all be over. But I have one word, pain. <laughs> and there we go. There that's, we isn't go. that closing, Mister T? That's, for, yeah, that's Clubber for, Clubber Lang yeah. and Rocky Three, yeah. right? Yeah, it's absolutely. It's like, what do you predict yeah. for to for the for the? Do you have a prediction? Right? Pain, pain. One, All right. Should one we line get to our ever. show? No, th- we are doing the show. This is our. Well, show. you know what I mean. Look I at, mean, look this at, is. I mean, people have been hitting this skip forward button. No, like, no, no. I'm sorry. Look at the this old marketing reviews. Look at them on Apple. And we don't have yeah. any on Spotify, I don't think. But look at them on Apple, and you will see that people think that we are an NFL show. And we happen to sprinkle yeah, well, in some we marketing. We still should do one of our special episodes on Jess football. But maybe when, okay. But in the meantime, we, won't, we should probably talk about some we'll uh, content review. and yeah. some media we'll, and some other things, Okay, too. we'll do the show today, but we'll do a playoff review <laughs> when the Browns and Cowboys both make the playoffs this year. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so not. Yeah. So you won't see that this year is what you're I'll saying. I'll tell you what. Somebody hold us to it, though, if it happens. We'll absolutely yeah, do it. I'll I'll waste an hour of everyone's time. There we go. That. Okay. I like it. All right, what do we have like on, on the show today? We got a great show. Uh, we have a great show. That uh, Everybody waited until after Content Marketing World, thankfully, uh, to release a bunch of new news. So there's way more news than we have time to talk about. Um, but we will pick some really, really interesting things that happened in the last week or so. Uh, the first, of course, is that Spotify is now selling audiobooks, which is a really interesting development from uh, from the audio provider. Twitch, the online network owned by Amazon, says, guess what? No more gambling, unless you're betting on the Browns or the Cowboys. <laughs> um, and then ESPN, speaking of sports, has launched a creator network, a content marketing influencer creator network. That'll be interesting to talk a little bit about. And then we'll talk about Starbucks and how they're getting into new web experiences, content experiences, but they're Web3 experiences. They still don't know how to make a proper mocha latte, but they definitely know how to make Web3. And if we get time, we'll talk a little bit about Warner Brothers already looking to eye to buy someone else. And then Joe will talk a little bit about one of his mentors, one of his uh, somebody very, very special in his life uh, and uh, and what he meant to him. And I will talk a little bit about uh, Patagonia and their purpose of purpose of purpose of purpose of purpose, which <laughs> seems to be an interesting thing. Uh, and a little bit about the Emmy Awards, uh, as uh, Joe likes when I do talk a little bit about the Emmys in Hollywood and all that kind of stuff. So a chock-a-block. Oh, I'm glad you're talking about the uh, Emmys, too, because I, yeah. I literally know nothing. I don't know who won. I didn't see it. I didn't hear about it. Like, nothing happened. So there, there you go. It was very interesting. Yes, we'll 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 talk at some length about about all of that. Or, yeah, the, so, don't you always right. talk about something at some length? I mean, it just doesn't I, mean always. It's, that's a terrible <laughs> thing because if you talk, <laughs> it's at some length. That would that would be that would yes, that is true. That is technically true. Uh, you know, that would be a good name for a podcast: talking <laughs> at some length. Yeah. That would, that's, that's, I like that. How long are you talking for? for I'm talking at some length. At some length. Yeah, and you're right. You're absolutely right. It yes. will be at some I, length. Actually, that should be the name of the podcast, At Some Length. But nobody's going to look at that. I have, you know how hard I have to work to come up with headlines that people want to click on? If I, when I say things like uh, Spotify in the news or whatever, nobody clicks on it. I have to do something like, you know, Spotify. Yeah, tell a story. Troll, yeah, Spotify trolls Apple with new audiobooks strategy. 
that's somewhat more interesting. <laughs> the title will emerge, I am sure. I just came up with it. Sp- that's it. Yeah. Speak- All right. Yeah. There you go. Well, let's speaking let's of Spotify. Yeah. Let's talk about what they're doing here. Uh, this comes to us courtesy of the Morning Brew, uh, and the article opens up by saying Spotify started selling audiobooks in the U.S. yesterday. It represents part two of the company's push to become a one-stop shop for your ear holes. What the hell? <laughs> Did they say okay. ear holes? <laughs> it does say ear holes. It says ear holes. The first being podcasts. I just, I, you know, I purposely don't read these ahead of time so that I am surprised. Um, Spotify's head of audiobooks, Near Zykerman, uh, said that the audiobook market is expanding by about 20% annually. What he didn't say is that it's dominated by one big player, Amazon. Its service, Audible, accounted for more than 40% of the audiobook market in 2018, according to Wait, 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 wait. This is Morning Brew, right? You're reading from Morning Brew? That's correct. They their and their stat to build the entire argument on here is from 2018. Yeah. Well, what? yeah. It looks like it. Yeah. What, is this well, nobody bought article? audiobooks in 2019 and 2020 and 2021. What? <laughs> it's been seen like. no, okay, I'm sorry. I just that caught it, me yeah. by surprise. No, it's some lazy <laughs> writing. It's a, some, <laughs> right. it's some lazy I didn't writing. Mean there's, to, there's, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go, go ahead. It's quite you. all right. Basically, the article goes on because it doesn't go on for much further because, as we've established, the writer here was lazy uh, and basically says that uh, Zykerman from Spotify teased the possibility of a freemium model, which would be free ad-supported audiobooks to the service. Uh, amateurs, uh, <laughs> oh my God, amateurs, I guess that would be like writers who aren't getting paid, would be able to <laughs> upload audiobooks to Spotify too. So if you thought your coworkers' text only ebooks were cringe, uh, okay, anyway, forget this article. Um, basically, what do you think? What do you, uh, Spotify aud- offering audiobooks, what, what are your thoughts? I'm still, I still can't believe that we're including this article. It, there's so yeah. many places. And, and I think I sent this to you, actually. You did. I did. You did. There were so many places yeah. to get this information from, and I sent you the one that's that's hideous. It well, has ear holes, yeah, ear, that, ear, that mentions ear, ear holes. Yeah, holes. there you go. Okay, so here is my take on this. I love that, uh, first, frankly, they're late, but that's fine. Spotify is late getting into the game on this. I love this, and the best thing I love about it, and why I brought up the whole idea of the, the trolling thing, they're going out, so you can't buy an audio uh, audiobook on the Spotify app. You have to go to the web, and they're doing yeah. now. That's that's not great for user experience, but they're they're doing it so they don't have to cut Apple and Google in on the take from Android and iPhone, which I love. So I think that the, first of all, that's I think that's the story of this whole thing. The second thing is any competition that we can give to distribute audiobooks away from Amazon or get some other players in here because my last exp- I've I've done I don't know 7 or 8 audiobook experiences with Audible first and then of course Amazon bought them and yeah it's not great it's not great no. And they Agreed. used to have a really good percentage take, and it's come down from I think it initially was fifty percent, then forty percent, then I think you're yeah you might get twenty percent. It was forty percent when I did it. Yeah. yeah, and it they were late when I did the will to die. They were really really late. I submitted that way early, and they were just so backlogged with the whole thing. But there, I like the idea of a free audiobook as well that. Creators can monetize this in different ways. Just because, because you, by the way, you can't submit uh, an audiobook to Apple with, or I'm sorry, to Amazon without charging something. I can't give it away for free, and I wanted, right. to, I want to do That's that right. sometimes. So maybe there's an opportunity here. Yeah, yeah, I, I 100% agree. It's it's so funny because so I just negotiated my contract with a with a new publisher, and you and I both used to advise authors like get your get your audiobook rights so that you you you're responsible for it and you do it because the take used to be so good it was the one place where you could actually make a little money um and that's not really the case anymore because the percentages have come down so much and and as you say the process is so broken really um it's just hard you know what i mean it's just hard to do it i mean i remember doing it myself for experiences the seventh era of marketing <clears throat> 
and I, you know, I put the whole thing together and I read the whole instruction and you have to put them in modules and you have to upload the modules separately and you have to, I mean, it's like, it's like filling out TPS forms, right? I mean, it's just <laughs> very, 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 very difficult. And so, but, and even then it was like, okay, once you're in, you can, it sort of runs, it's a machine that runs and you're okay. But just doing it was very, very difficult. If they make it easier for this, if they make it easier for authors to, to do this casually, you know, one of the things you and I talked about years ago was doing something that was more short form, that wasn't so onerous as an audio book, but to do like an audio album. Yep. You know, we like, did. A, like a spoken word album that was a 45 minute book, basically, and put that not in the audio book, but actually put it in the albums section of, you know, uh, sell it like an album. And, and and that's I think this is what I find so interesting about this particular thing is is by democratizing it, you know, <laughs> all due disrespect to this or this author for, you know, calling them amateurs, but basically content creators that want to create a book that are that they can upload easily and simply and put on a distribution network like Spotify I think it's a it, it's nice to have some competition in the market I, I definitely think that that's a, a good thing and by the way I would also point to marketing departments because one of the things that becomes so hard about doing an audiobook of your boss or your subject matter expert or your thought leadership or whatever you wanted to do was like Oh geez, how do how do you know we got to go have to do the whole Amazon thing, and it's going to have to we're going to have to charge money for it. And we don't want to charge money for it, you know. We want it to be a thought leadership thing, and and, and all that. Well, now here you have another opportunity. Now there's mm-hmm. now there's an opportunity to distribute it through Spotify, and you could you know you could you could make it you know either you know freemium or some other thing. And I haven't seen all the features that they're going to offer yet, but I think this is big news for content marketers as well. It's, it's, it, I don't know why I thought about this, but when Google got into the search engine game, I always thought that they were able to dominate quickly or and take the lead from really at the time it was Yahoo because Yahoo was all over the place. Yahoo was doing all the things and Google came in and said, yeah. we're going to do a great search engine experience. And they did. And now they're in a bunch of other stuff, but at the time that's all they were focusing on. That's Spotify right. focuses on audio. All they're doing right now is focusing on audio. Everything is audio. The the, the ear hole thing. That's all they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> and and if you look at Apple and you look at Amazon, they're in all the businesses, right? To be, they're trying to take over the world and it's in, in different ways. Spotify just said, "Good, you can do all the other businesses. Apple, you're going to create the car. Amazon, you're going to, you know, create your own country. Whatever you're going to do, but Spotify, we just want audio. And I think because yeah. they're focused on that, I think they're going to win. I would put my money on Spotify. So good for them. Yeah. Well, it's just it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, the they just haven't. I mean, if you think about it, Audible. You know, I mean, Audible, let's not forget that Audible used to be an independent company. That's right. And, and the, you know, the experience of Audible hasn't really changed. They have not innovated that product at all, really. And so, you know, there ha- you know, Audible, the experience from the consumer side on the app to everything else is still pretty much the same as it was in 2012 or 2013 or whenever it was that they became, you know, they became part of the Amazon juggernaut. So, yeah, it's, you know, you're right. They have not innovated at all in this space, and there's been a lot of opportunity. To Absolutely. You know space. what? You know what else they haven't innovated with? For are you on Goodreads? Uh, yeah. So I guess it is the exactly. same. It's another. It, it, yes. It's really like going back in time. Like you think you That's right. you were think you were an archive like way back machine. Yep. When you realize right. this is the current site. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck, man? It's like going back and looking at an old Yahoo page, yeah, oh, or something so, like that. And yeah, again, it's, it's, uh, by the way, Goodreads bought by Amazon a couple of years ago. Yeah, so it's, that's right. Well, and by the way, they were supposed to integrate it. It was supposed to be all integrated and put put in together with Audible and with the bookstore, and you know, but, but it's still, you know, there's just not. I, I you know, the the the, the, the I, I think the ultimate thing is is that there's just not a lot of money. It's not a market that's worth really building in, but books like but this is the classic i i think you know uh (laughs) not to bring theodore levitt to bear here but this is the classic 
Amazon thinks it's in the book business when it's actually in the audio business, and Spotify understands that it's in the audio business. Oh, that's right? a really so, good way. That's a really good way yeah. to put it. Uh, okay, yeah. so basically, the title of this episode is "Spotify Gets the Ear Holes." Is there, that, <laughs> there you go. Can I? There you go. I get in trouble? Don't for be that? an ear hole. Yeah, yeah, stop being just an ear hole. All Not right, stop being an ear hole. All right, <laughs> here we go. Let's move on to our next story here and get out of the ear holes. Uh, and let's move on to Twitch. This comes to us courtesy of Twitter, of all places. Uh, fun side note, the Twitter shareholders, by the way, approved Elon's bid. Of course they did. So basically calling, well, calling his bluff, basically, right? Um, and so anyway, so we won't talk about that. But, uh, but Twitch actually tweeted, wow, that's a tough one to say, um, and basically said, here's an update on gambling on Twitch. Uh, and as the tweet actually says in a, a posted image, because it's way more than 240 characters, gambling content on Twitch has been a big topic of discussion in the community and something we've been actively reviewing since our last policy update in this area. Today, we want to update you on our plans. While we prohibit sharing links or referral codes to all sites that include slots, roulette, dice games, we've seen some people circumvent those rules and expose our community to potential harm. Expose. You're exposed. So we'll be making a policy update on October 18th to prohibit streaming of gambling sites that include slots, roulette, or dice games that aren't licensed either in the U.S. or other jurisdictions. Uh, that includes Stake, Rollbit, Dualbits, Rubit, uh, and many other, I'm sure, very oddly named sites. We will continue to allow websites that focus on sports betting, fantasy sports, and poker. We'll share specifics on the updates to our gambling policy soon. Now, I know you have a particularly strong take on this, so I'm just going to throw the ball over to you and let you let you roll with it, because I, I didn't really understand the importance of this, but I want you to educate me. Well, I, I've been covering, so in my personal uh, Joe Polizzi newsletter. I've been covering this for a few weeks simply because my son Adam and I have been talking about it consistently. So he's very active on Twitch. He's in. A, he has a number of creators that he follows there, and he believes that the whole online gambling thing is a huge, huge problem. And basically, for those people who don't know, there are content creators and they stream whatever regular streaming hours they have, but they go ahead and they'll stream and they play. Uh, online slots for the most part. And some of these creators, XQC to one is XQC is one of the, the most popular Twitch creators and YouTube creators on the planet used to start in just gaming and basically was doing, uh, I don't know, uh, call of duty and with some of the other things. And he would record himself game, film it, whatever, stream himself gaming. And people would watch that. And he had thousands of people watching it. And then he moved over from gaming and he started to get into online gambling. And so here's a, his core audience is, was between 14 and 19 years old. So these kids that came for the games are now able to see all these online gambling thing. And of course, what can go wrong with that? Okay, so that yeah. that was a couple weeks ago that I talked about that. Right. Now this one, so basically what happened, there is a streamer named Sliker, and I did not know Sliker, but my son Adam did, and he told me all about it. But basically popular streamer, millions and millions of followers, over the last few months had been going to other streamers, other content creators, and then out specifically to his fans and followers as well, saying that he really was in tight for money, all kinds of lies. Like, I can't get the money right now. I can't get into my Patreon account. I can't get into Twitch. I can't get my money out. Can you send me a thousand bucks? Can you send me two thousand bucks? Well, apparently Sliker was taking all this and he was using it for his own online gambling habit. Oops. Yeah. Yeah. Now, did an apology video. Who could he, have predicted that? Yeah. Who would have ever predicted that? Well, and I mean. did an apology video, but in the in the his whole communication, this is what, <laughs> apology video. Well, in my I like that. Well, what Adam what Adam told me. I'm sorry, I stole your money. Exactly. But he <laughs> said he would have kept going if he wasn't outed. Somebody, another creator, basically right. came out and said, "Hey." Uh, this guy is is spending all our money on gambling. It's called an addiction. Yeah, yeah it's, it's called gambling addiction. Yeah, so this exactly. Yeah. So this lead leads to the larger problem of on, so um, of online gambling and and these streams and whatnot. And so I was talking to my son about it, and I said, "What do you think is going to happen?" And he said the same thing that always happens with Twitch. Unless the big streamers don't boy if they if they boycott 
and they actually get loud about this thing, Twitch will do something. If they don't, they're not going to do anything. Because that basically, <laughs> it's an Amazon cup. I mean, they don't, sure. I mean, why would there they do go. anything? They're gonna, not going to change anything. That's what that's kind of the, their modus operandi, if they will, if you will. So uh, they, they had Pokimane and Devin Nash and a bunch of other big streamers come out and say that they were going to boycott Twitch unless Twitch did something about the online gambling because they said oh, it all leads to this. Yeah. So these content creators got together. They were very formidable. They had a lot of millions in their audience. And then Twitch comes out with what you read to start this whole thing. And here's where we're at. So my quick take is I don't like, and we it's sort of uh, in what we do with this show, I don't like all, any content censorship at all. I don't like when people get banned off of platforms. I don't like, except one person. But other than that, I like everybody else to have their say <laughs> and all that good stuff. But... Because this affects young kids, and I don't want to see young kids. But this is, I was talking to Adam about this, and I would love your take on it. And he, so, XQ, well, not XQC, but some people like XQC, when they go and they're streaming their slot play, they're, pay, they're playing a thousand dollars or a thousand euro per spin. Yeah. Think about that. That's per spin. Think about if you were going yeah. to Caesars and you're putting a thousand bucks into one machine. They spin oh, uh, for hours doing that. And sometimes oh yeah. Losing, I have a story. I have a story about that for sure. Yeah. yeah losing millions of dollars, but you had companies yep. like stake.com who were basically staking them saying, Hey, we'll, yep. we'll give you all the money. Go ahead and do your thing. Well, what Adam was saying is he's like, these kids who watch, they think that they think that's normal. So when they right. see any gambling, they're not going to look and play the penny slots. They're going in the same, well, where's my where's where's my hundred dollar slot? Because that's yeah. normal. So in this case, well, that's case, the whole I, point. That's the whole point of this thing, right? That's the it's that's the whole that's the whole point. Yeah. So I in this case, I like that Twitch made this decision. It's very important. Uh, we'll see where it leads to other types of content, but kudos to the people that got together and did this, and uh, and I feel bad for all the people that were scammed. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean that's that's the whole point is to normalize, you know, you know what we we quickly forget that the normal normal people playing slots play for a quarter or fifty cents or maybe a dollar a spin, right? That's the whole point, and you know there are what they called, uh, you know, because I used to, you know, when I was doing my when I was the musical director of the ca this cabaret that we used to we used to tour Las Vegas and. Reno and and you know uh, um, Atlantic City and, and and all that, and our shows were for the quote unquote high roller slots people, and what they what the casinos would do is they would gather two hundred of the highest roller slots, give them all free hotel rooms, give them all free shows that was us you know entertainment and give them all free food and drinks and all of that and then segment off an area of the casino floor where they were expected to play for three or four hours yep. at a thousand dollars a pull. And I'll never forget walking over to this little old lady who was the age of my grandmother. And, you know, we were doing like a forties cabaret, like a, you know, a, like a, you know, film noir kind of thing. So I had on a fedora hat and a vest and a whole thing. And I was supposed to speak in like gangster speak, you know, like, hi, she, yeah, this is what you're doing. She, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's which is a whole other thing. But anyway, I walked up to her and, and I dropped the voice and I dropped everything and I said, "I said, oh, how are you doing?" Because she reminded me so much of my grandmother. And she said, "Oh, not too well today." You know, I said, "Oh, where are you from?" She said, "Oh, I'm from Wisconsin and a uh, little town there." And I've, I've this is my vacation for the year. And I'm like, "Oh, that's so sweet." How, and you said you weren't doing well. She said, "No, I've probably lost about forty or fifty. And she meant forty or fifty thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars, and I just I, I I literally had to turn around and walk away because I just was so, I mean I was ready to like, you know, throw up. Uh, it was just it was just really awful. So, yeah, this we the, you know, this kind of addiction is not something that we want to be fueling and normalizing. That's why they're doing it. They're staking these people because it normalizes a thousand dollars a spin. That's right, and I. A hundred percent, and behind Twitch, B 
banning this. This is this is the equivalent of us fig- finally figuring out that cigarettes, you know, the smoke is is not good for you, and that you know calling yourself a big old cowboy or or that you're super sexy smoking cigarettes is not normalizing that behavior. And, and by the way, I mean I, I'm not against gambling i mean you you know like no, i love the i love going to casinos either. i absolutely yeah. love i love everything about it i love the gambling i love people watching absolutely I love, the, I love the hopefully free drinks everything from that standpoint is great the problem is is that you're right about normalization and look what's happened with DraftKings and with online sports betting it has become normalized and and i'm and that basically every state pretty soon you'll be allowed to sports bet if you're not already uh, and it's happening, of course, every uh, European football team, it seems, is sponsored by some kind of online sports betting site. It has become normalized. It's going to be a big problem. We are on the we're on the threshold of idiocracy, the movie. Yes. <laughs> and it's, well, it's a concern. But here's the thing, though. There is gambling implies some level of skill. It just does. I'm, you know, so when I think of gambling, and maybe this is my own naivete, it's just you know, my own rationalization. But when I think of gambling, there is some level of skill involved. Poker, blackjack, sports betting. You know, there is some level of knowledge that you, you can have obtain to yeah, help you, you can. to help you change the odds slightly. Slot machines is an entirely different thing. Slot machines is the lottery. That's, That's right. not gambling. That slot machines is just literally a you know you might know the odds they, they they might be they might even tell you what the odds are but it's just random it's just it it's a completely random thing that's going to hit x amount of times and it's just sheer synchronicity that you happen to be in front of the machine when the odds get you yeah. know work in your favor well that's There's no skill you can attain that's true except for if you rub the screen I've learned that, <laughs> <laughs> I learned that if you if you rub the screen in the right place, there you go. It pays. I tell you that right now. <laughs> there you go. Uh, very good. I, uh, you know, there's there's a joke right there's there the that I'm not name. even going. I'm, I'm not going. Are we gonna go with go. the Spotify ear hole? Or are we gonna go with rub the screen? Rub the screen. Yeah. Hashtag rub the screen. All right. Let's move on to our next story here, which is also about sports. Uh, oh my goodness gracious! What a show. But this this show this, has jumped the shark. Yeah. It's done. Rub the screen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this comes to us courtesy of Marketing Dive. Uh, let's see how they do as opposed to Morning Brew. Um, the headline here is ESPN launches a creator network to attract Gen Z. Uh, the article opens up by saying ESPN is launching ESPN Creator Network. No word on whether they're going to call it the Ocho or the Nuevo, but all right. The, oh, the yeah. ESPN Creator Network providing up and coming content creators with access to ESPN sports properties and resources. The first iteration will feature 10 creators and focus on TikTok. It will begin in October and run for about four months. The Creator Network is a partnership with social-led content agency Blue Hour Studios. The Creator Network follows similar efforts by other publishers and social platforms that are seeking to engage with Gen Z by boosting support for content creators. Basically, the ESPN Creator Network allows the worldwide leader in sports, and that's in quotes, to engage with Gen Z consumers by boosting the people they trust most, content creators on social media platforms. The move follows the industry-wide push to elevate creators as a way to pursue a generation of ad-weary consumers that are difficult to reach through traditional channels. Fascinating here. Um, the article goes on basically to talk about the statistics of ESPN and TikTok where and some of the creators there. And basically they're going to feature these creators, I guess, talking about sports or doing something to try and you know, generate some interest in sports, which is falling with Gen Z, apparently. So what do you think about this? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's fine. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an influencer program. Totally fine. I don't know why you have to call it Creator Network. It's because Creator Networks are in, in vogue right now. There isn't yeah. one major platform that doesn't have a cre- quote unquote, a Creator Network right now. Good for them. It's fine. I think it's great. I think it's just fine. What do you think of it? <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, so more than you, um, <laughs> apparently. You think it's brilliant. Um, 
Because it's gonna, no, gonna call I, it the Ocho. I, I don't know that it's brilliant. I mean, it's 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 like you said. It's 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 uh, or it's certainly implied. It's an experiment, right? They're they're they they haven't gone all in on this, right? They're basically testing something. Basically, they're testing some influencers on TikTok to see if it you know if to see if it floats. And but here's here, here's what I would say. One very much like what we used to rail against in the older days about the experimentations with content marketing. And we used to go, eh, you're going to get what you put into it. Remember those? Yes. So uh, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that they're doing this with such a small, you know, well, it's a beta. Move. It's a beta test. Not even a beta. I mean, it's 10 people, right? 10 creators and on TikTok. It's like, that's, that's not going to give you a, a big chance for a huge success here. Right. Chances are one of them maybe goes a little viral, maybe becomes a hit, maybe becomes something that they can actually build on. But this isn't a true investment in my in my mind. And so to your point, everybody's launching a creator network. And, you know, and I know a lot of B2B companies, like not media companies, right, are thinking about this as well. They're creating these creator networks. We know a few of them. And I've had clients ask me about creating a creator network or an influencer network. And my advice to them is if you're going to do it, invest in it. Like it, make it a thing, right? It don't just play around with this thing. Don't just get one or two or three and do like an exclusive sponsorship kind of thing and just, you know, sort of, you know, dabble in it, right? Because if you dabble in it, it's it's going to give you exactly that. You're going to get dabble back. And but if you if if you truly invest in it, take the time, put a strategy together, think about it long term. You can always kill it if it's like falling flat on its face. But if you don't put the requisite investment, thinking, and and time and money, quite honestly, into it, you're not. I can tell you now, this is not going to work. Right? It's just you're going to get mediocre or less than mediocre results out of it. And this is what this says to me when I look at the ESPN Creator Network. I go. This is them doing something really interesting that could be really interesting and them sort of, I, you know, I can hear the boss in the meeting now. All right, I approve this, but I'm only going to give you 20 bucks to do it. So yeah. go, if you can figure it out with 10 people, then you come back to me and you make the business case for it. And the people are like, yes, we got it. We won. Let's go back to the agency, that blue house place and tell them that our project is approved. The blue, the blue house, it, whatever the <laughs> blue name hour, the blue hour, right? The blues and basically, clues. they went yeah. back and did that, and it's and it's going to be like you just said, fine. It's yeah. going to be fine. And so, I, I just I, I I read these articles, and I and I and I worry that, like you said, everybody wants to create a creator network these days, but it's it's articles like this or or initiatives like not the article, it's the initiative like this that makes. Other businesses go, yeah, let's do this in a really small way. You know, so that's that's my take on it. You're, they probably put no money in the game. It's probably all distribution access, so there's no skin in the game. Yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. It's an easy, yeah. it's an easy thing for them to but, do. But yeah. I would say that, yeah, you 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 say that ten's not. I think that if maybe they had eight or nine creators, then I would be worried. But because they have ten, <laughs> I'm feeling yeah. pretty good. I think that's ten's right. the right. <laughs> Ted is the right number. Oh my gosh! There, I mean, there's so many people that you know. There, there's, there's, you know, I, I get off on a rant, but, but who knows? There's so yeah. many things they could have done here, right? To to make this interesting. Um, but the fact that you're going meh, and I'm going meh, and the I'm sure the world is going okay. You you go do you do you, uh, fine. You know what I mean? It's like uh, this is not. It, in a in a <laughs> we live in, in an advertising and marketing space where we make tens of millions of dollars of investments these brands like these make tens of millions of dollars to do a super bowl commercial or to do to run a flight across you know 3 months on you know uh, the NFL right and spend tens hundreds of millions of dollars in ad space and in but then to do something like this 
they spend, you know, they, they reach in and, and, and you know, they, they, they find a bucket of pucks somewhere and go, oh, I got some pocket change and a bucket of pucks. Let's go do this. It's like, ugh, it's just, it's just, you know, I, I wish they would take it more seriously. It probably was a literal bucket of pucks at ESPN. Literally. Yeah. No, literally. 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 Yeah. Literally. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. This is, by the way, big opportunity for other sports content creators because this this might just be a this might sure. be this is this Absolutely. you know what in con- you, be, you too could be one of the 10 yeah <laughs> well you you know how you, we got to the point we talked about it on the show quite a few times like content marketing check the box but oh got the strategy yeah, Oop, that's right got the buyer persona yep. Oop, i'm on twitter and facebook that that's kind of i think what this is oh this is the tiktok strategy check yep Good. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go and then good point. And we all go back and party at the Blue House with our bucket of bucks. At the, at the Blue House. I bet there is. I bet you. I guarantee you, there was a party. There was a dinner for the celebration of this of this program getting approved. I guarantee you. And it was probably at some very fancy restaurant or sports bar where they all had really really good drinks. So maybe that was the whole point. A blue martini. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> anyway, <I> don't, don't <laughs> we can go on Adobe's for... acquisition of Figma, but we'll get on to our. Oh um, my God, you uh, were yeah. We're not even talking about that. You went on. A, I mean, you and I were on an email where you went on a rant about how they just way outpaid or way way over. Oh my God, that. it's just absolutely insanity. I mean, I love getting Robert Rant. That. Robert Rant emails are the best because. People don't know this about you, but you don't have any periods, and you're, you. It's like one. That's right. It's, it's all ellipses. It's, By the way, it's like three hundred words, hip these one days. sentence. That's very hip these days with the with the kids. The kids don't like periods. Yeah. They they want they want ellipses because they ellipses, find periods You're aggressive. all into the ellipses, so you basically that's have right. a three. You have multiple paragraphs, multiple paragraphs of ellipses, and you yes. own it. You own it. Absolutely, hundred percent. You always have hundred percent. You were the original. You're the OG ellipses. An editor said to me one time, one of my book editors, I'll never forget this. She says, you use punctuation like Dr. Seuss uses words. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I take that. I, think, I wear that with a badge of honor, my friend. I yeah. think that was, was that managing content marketing? I, think, I it was. was on that book. It was exactly what that was. I remember that, that yeah. comment. That was yeah. poor Lisa who edited that. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next story here, which uh, comes to us courtesy of Starbucks themselves, um, telling their own story, as it were. Uh, and basically, the headline that they have said is Starbucks is brewing a revolutionary Web3 experience for its Starbucks Rewards member. Um, basically, they're calling it the Starbucks Odyssey. Oh, my gosh. Um, and new Starbucks Odyssey experience the odyssey get it do you do you, do you see what I they did, did there yes, odyssey I got it. okay all right new starbucks odyssey experience will f- offer members the ability to earn and buy digital collectible stamps nfts that will unlock access to new immersive <laughs> new immersive coffee experiences as one of the first companies to integrate NFTs with an industry-leading loyalty program at scale, Starbucks will create an accessible web3 community that will enable new ways to engage with members and partners Starbucks today, and the, uh, the the release goes on to say it unveiled the Starbucks Odyssey, this new experience, um, and some quotes to, that these executives didn't write themselves for absolute sure. It was a PR agency, PR agency, PR agency. Uh, and basically then it ends with a forward-looking statement that says, all this might just <laughs> put us under the water. Um, yeah, what do you think about all this? So it, I think it's a great test. I really do. Uh, besides the fact that this is just a press release that we're reading here. Um, Starbucks has a relatively decent loyalty experience. I've been a part of it for a while. I would make some recommendations to it, but they do a good job, uh, even though it's, you know, it's not web three in any way because it's their membership loyalty program and you get the, you get the benefits now, but they could take them away at any time, whatever. It's fine. We're trying to go to web three, give a little bit of ownership to people, I don't know what these unique coffee experiences are going. I'm intrigued. 
I'm intrigued by the unique coffee sure, experiences. Yeah. I would like a unique coffee experiences. I lo- I love coffee. An immersive, immersive coffee experience. Immersive. I want to be immersed in my I want, coffee. Yeah. I want to do that. But I think that for everyone listening to this, this is not a nice test run. They're not replacing their loyalty program by any means. They're they're basically saying, hey, can we get in? To this Web three thing and integrate this, and is do we want to build a community? Can we have an aspect of ownership? It, like, can we figure this thing out? So yes, I think this might be something. Who knows? But this is a good way to sort of dip the toe in the water and and see. So it's a, it's a combination of some new experience, access to maybe a group of people or people from Starbucks. We don't know. Plus, they have different artists involved from a collectability standpoint. It could be something. Uh, you know, obviously Adidas and Nike have shown that there's, there's something there, uh, with NFTs, they've made them work at least for now. Um, so, and we're so early in this process, we've got to test these things. So I, Hey, maybe they're putting more than a bucket of pucks into this. Oh, launch. they almost certainly yeah. are. Yeah. That, this is, this because is, this there's is a lot of $3 word. There's a lot of $3 words in this release right here. And oh yeah, very they, they put more than a bucket of pucks in this. Yeah, to the agency that wrote this. Yeah, yeah it's sure. really, really impressive. But I, I love like it the too. Disclaimer. You know, I mean, I, the disclaimer is the best, my favorite part. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. If you get a chance, we're going to put know, the show I, in the show notes. Just read the disclaimer. It'll make you feel warm yeah. and fuzzy. It, it, very warm and fuzzy. Yeah. You know, it, it, I do like it as well. I mean, I sounded a little snarky about it, but I, I like the experiment. I like what they're doing here. Um, and, and as we've said forever around nfts and 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 whatnot the immediate you know sort of opportunity is in the loyalty space right creating levels of ownership and experiential types of uh content experiences that will enable better loyalty evangelism and community and you know young people especially um I think it's a it's a great way to target young people and, and to say this we you know we're still irrelevant uh, for you right you know it's not just something you put on a card it's something that you can actually see and hear and experience and you know as you know it, it goes to everything from remote work and where you're doing work these days to inside you know they talk about Starbucks being the third place you know um, I you thought know, that was a bar home or work. Yeah, <laughs> I always thought the third place was where you got alcohol, not coffee. But, there, well, yeah, there you go. But uh, they, they, well, they do. Some Starbucks do have. Oh, that's oh man, I, I, really I haven't hit one of those, but I absolutely would like to. It's interesting. That we're I was on a podcast this morning, and we were talking about content marketing, and they said, "Well, why Web three, Joe? Like we're talking about content experiences." And and I said, "We're in mar- we're in the marketing business. We're in the behavior changing business." And I said, I can tell you firsthand with my, I mean, you can share your idea, coin idea, but with our till coin, I can tell you that our best customers, our most loyal fans are uh, are connected to, to our till coin. There's no doubt about it. They absolutely, are there, that's our, our NFT project. They do that. So there is something there. Now, is that a temporary thing? Because Web3, I don't know, but right now it's working. So yeah. So this is this could be really part of a unique content experience or access to unique content that they wouldn't normally get. And what binds that together is for right now this token technology that I think could be a thing. So who knows? Yeah. It's a sense of ownership. I think yeah. I think that's it, it's the co created ownership idea. Um and you know, giving giving community members a stake in the success of the community and a sense of ownership of that community through the idea of, you know, tokens or whatever it is, is, you know, ultimately it makes them feel like their voice, that they're being heard and that they're, you know, that they're, that the, that what they're say matters. And, and that's, you know, that's a critical piece today when you're, when you're talking about the relationship that a brand can have with someone is that, you know, if they feel part of it, then they're, they're going to be more loyal to what it is you do. So exactly. it's, It's, it's that simple. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, let's get to our rants and raves, the part of the show that is empirically proven to be the favorite part of the show over the football stuff, of course, uh, where Joe and I go off in a little bit of a rant or a little bit of a rave, as it turns out, uh, to make us feel like we're next in line for the king uh, of England or that we're basically like Meg and Harry, sort of 
<laughs> sequestered off to Santa Barbara, um, where we live in isolation. Um, but they're probably happy, though, they're, right? Oh, they're so, they're so much happier. Yeah. Uh, they, and they're yeah. moving out, by the way. They're moving away from Santa Barbara. The, the rumor is, is that they... Uh, they they're moving they to Calabasas. Um, well, so somewhere they're going to move somewhere, but but the rumor is is that they're moving away from Santa Barbara simply because it's just too quiet. It's just it's not enough hubbub, not enough not a, not enough not enough bub to hub, um, as it were. Move to New York. Always something. Yeah. Going well, there. that's that may be that may be where they go. Yeah. Yeah. It, it'll be interesting to see. Anyway, you, uh, you shall I go first? Yeah. Why don't you, so, why don't you go so first? That you can you yeah. Absolutely. I'll go first. Um, so I have two very quick things. One is just to call attention to uh, this thing that happened um, last week, um, and I'm actually, I, I, it's hard for me to understand how I'm going to do this, but I'm actually going to link to a, a Mark Ritson article. I know, I know. Oh, man. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's from Marketing Week, and Mark talks about, uh, I think, a very smart article and a, and a bit of an analysis on Patagonia, and the headline, which... I'm going to just give it to him as a good headline. Uh, the purpose of purpose is purpose is just a great headline. So good for you, Mark. Um, anyway, he talks about the idea that Patagonia made headlines um, this last week. Basically, <clears throat> he gave away the entire company. Uh, the owner of Patagonia just gave away the entire company basically to a trust that will ensure uh, that um, it will it will go on, but it will be actually be meant for the purpose of what he had tried to do. So beyond him, he basically he's not he's no longer a billionaire, right? So he just gave away the entire company. And what Mark talks about is the actual, you know, his analysis of what went on and 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 how marketers can really learn from that. Um, because you know, as you start to look at what the brand values are and what the purpose is, uh, you know, you can you can really learn from what happened here in terms of how we can actually change what we're doing from purpose driven marketing. Um, and it's just a really good article. I just I, I really liked it. <clears throat> and so, uh, in terms of you know, in terms of his take uh, and what's going on here, it's uh, it, it, it was really good. So he talks about Unilever and he talks about, you know, all sorts of different companies and some of the failures they've had in purpose driven marketing. But it's really the backbone of it is about the, the Patagonia news that the, the owner of Patagonia has basically given away his entire company and given it to a trust that's driven on the purpose of the company. So good stuff. The other thing uh, is, as I promised, I talked a little bit about the uh, the Emmys. Um, you did not see the Emmys, I'm assuming. You did not. You did. You said you first. Didn't watch oh, them. Well, first of all, what are the Emmys? No, I, I did. Not, no, I didn't <laughs> right. see. I didn't see any. What are their relevance? I in the know. World? Yeah. I know nothing. So go ahead. So, the first thing is just to note, as we have, as we predicted, seven years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago. Now, um, what I was struck by was basically of the. 60 awards given uh only let's see it looks like about eight of them no uh let's see 11 of them came from broadcast tv and that that's the totality of the awards uh, basically every major award that you would have seen on the show was a streaming network right yeah so netflix hulu disney plus apple amazon and hbo max by the way hbo hbo max they had more awards uh, than any than all of the broadcast networks combined. So NBC, CBS, ABC, FX, VH1, you know, National Geographic, all of the sort of cable slash broadcast networks, um, all of them combined were dwarfed by HBO. That at thirty eight, they won thirty eight Emmy awards. It's just unbelievable how powerhouse HBO is as a as a content brand. Um, in terms of the quality of, of the content that they're producing. Netflix was second, by the way, with 26 um, awards. So Netflix wow. has now won 26 Emmys this year. Jeez. Um, and then Hulu, who's a big surprise, nine, 10, 10 Emmy awards. Apple won nine, almost all of them for Ted Lasso. Uh, Disney Plus, Amazon, Amazon won a bunch, etc. My My major thing was in looking at the, the winners, um, the you know the ones that were featured on the the TV show and they were they were all 
from streaming networks and all of them from sort of this super creative, uh, you know, not so in, in other words, if you think of the broadcast typical either sitcoms or, uh, you know, sort of uh, weekly dramas, you know, your, you know, the law shows or the fire shows or the police shows that are, you know, your procedurals and all that sort of thing. That used to be the, the, the absolute, uh, you know, sort of quintessential place where you were going to win an Emmy award, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, was, in other words, you were either going to win if you were on some, you know, sitcom and you'd been on there for a few years and you basically, you're a beloved character or if you're on one of the procedural shows like Law & Order, you're going to win for either being having an amazing guest star appearance or you're going to win because of that. You know, all of those shows, no, out, out. All of the shows that won like Best Actor or were basically single series, you know, or limited series or, you know, series that were one arc or two or three seasons. And these were, you know, they're basically... The, what has happened is the entire genre of television has been changed by streaming in terms of how we look at uh, the way shows are structured from a story perspective. And I think that's just a really interesting thing is how the art form of television has completely now shifted. It is just different. You, you can't even imagine a show like Euphoria or Succession or any of those kinds of shows back in the 90s or early 2000s. In, in 20 short years, the entire genre of what television is has just completely flipped on its head to basically being extended movies, right? They're just longer arcs, deeper characters, longer explorations of storylines. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. It, hasn't, it doesn't always work, right? You know, episode three or four, you're like, what? This is such a slow-moving episode. Why am I watching this? Um, but... It's the art form has changed, and that's what I really noticed in the Emmy Awards, the shift from what we used to think of as the sort of quintessentially form format, I guess, of the television show to what it is today. So where is it going? You know, I don't know. I, I really don't know. You know, I'm, 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 I, I just started Andor, by the way. Um, oh, I haven't seen it uh, yet. Yeah. Uh, so far, I'd say you could skip it. Um, I'm, 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 I'm on the third episode because they dropped three um, as sort of the thing, and I haven't watched episode three yet. And I'm hoping it gets better because it's so far it's slow. Um, yeah. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll report back. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it's going. It's just it's fascinating to me. Yeah, I mean we we did say that uh, you know. Well, I think it had to be like 2014, 15. We were talking about, hey, you know, it's going to you're going to have Amazon and you're going to have Apple that are going to win all these awards in the future. And everybody was like, you guys are nuts. What are you smoking here? It's all happened. And plus, and then you're talking about the, all these format changes. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I'll be brief with mine. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out. And you know this, Robert, you and I have talked about it quite a bit. But my uh, former boss and, and mentor, Jim McDermott, passed away this week on yeah. September 19th. Um, I, I wrote, I've written a lot about Jim uh, because I want to make sure people know what Jim has contributed to the content marketing industry specifically. Um, so if you want to see, it's on my link, public LinkedIn page, Facebook, my newsletter, whatever. But I just wanted specifically for people to know that Content Marketing World and Content Marketing Institute as it is today would not have existed without Jim because I started in the year 2000 at Penton Media and worked for Jim in Penton Custom Media, which was Penton's content marketing division. And Jim is the one that taught me about, you know, what are we doing here? We're trying to help these companies tell stories, build audiences, as we believe this is a better philosophy for marketing. And Jim really believed that and basically taught me everything I know about publishing, selling, editorial, management, corporate politics. And Jim never got any credit in my, I mean, maybe he did to some people, but you know, when I started noodling around with the term content marketing is, is he was very involved in that. He's the one that really suggested me using that in sales meetings and see how it resonated. And that obviously worked 
very fairly well because we decided to go all in on that. But Jim spent 37 years at Penton Media. He was a leader in the heating, air conditioning, ventilation area, publisher of contracting business magazine, HPAC magazine, which was the engineering publication, contractor magazine, the plumbing magazine. He got all kinds of awards. The the contractors and the manufacturers in the uh, contra- in the in the heating and air conditioning industry would have never been talking to each other if it wasn't for Jim. Jim had these things called dialogue meetings that he put together to make sure that the contractors and the manufacturers could get together. He avoided all kinds of horrible things happening in that industry. And then for his second, third, fourth act, he got involved in content marketing. And uh, you know who you know obviously I, you know I don't know Robert. You don't know how these things turned out, but I I don't see myself having the opportunity to get in the content marketing industry as we know it today, because if I didn't meet Jim, I would have never known it was a thing. And I was able to meet Jim and he really got me started with the whole thing and was my biggest cheerleader moving forward and said, absolutely, CMI, start that business. Absolutely, you'll write that book. Um, and he was the, he was my first reviewer on all these things. He was my first advisor on content marketing Institute. Um, so just, a great friend of mine. Uh, I had no right to have somebody that wonderful in my life, making sure that, you know, I was doing the right things or thinking about things differently. And that was the great thing about Jim. He always listened. He asked really good questions and he always um, basically forced me not to look at the obvious. And, uh, and of course, is there anything more non-obvious than content marketing marketing? So just <laughs> right. thank you. I wanted to thank Jim yeah. for his friendship. He'll definitely be missed. But I wanted to make sure everyone on this podcast that lis- listens to you and I babble about this stuff for the last 10 years know that the show might not have existed in its current form yeah. if it wasn't yeah. for Jim McDermott. So there you go. Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. Yeah, it's the, you know, the, the, the people that we have in our lives that are truly, truly meaningful. Um, and they're often the people that are, <clears throat> you know, we least expect, you know what I mean? You know, I, I, I'm 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 relatively sure that most people didn't know about that. You know, because how, you certainly didn't how didn't wear they? that relationship on you know on your sleeve or anything. You know what I mean? And and so so it's 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 those people that sometimes you least suspect that have, have the the biggest impact on your life. And it's just a lovely a, a lovely lovely thing. The, I mean, I knew about him because you you know you you talked about him so often in, in terms of his advice and what he would say and all those things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so it's, 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 it's wonderful that you can bring it forward. Um, and, uh, and he will be missed for sure. He will be missed. So yeah, absolutely. And we'll be, uh, you know, services are are next week in North Carolina. Um, and, uh, it was wonderful. His, his wife wants to, you know, it's the lieu of flowers, send it to the Orange Effect Foundation, which, which Jim was also very involved in throughout the years. I think he, of the 16 golf outings we had, I think Jim was at 10 or 11 of them before he was just not traveling anymore from North Carolina. So that was very lovely as well. So it's just, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know these things. And, and I, honestly, I don't know if a lot of his kids, Jim had seven kids, and, and I don't think his kids knew how integral he was. Um, he loved, you know, of course, Jim loved to talk business and would always talk business, but I don't think they knew about his involvement in the industry. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. So that's not a there you go. It's leave it on a high note because uh, we, we're all it's, we're all benefiting from from what Jim did. Absolutely. So we're going to praise yeah, that. Absolutely. Today. It's yeah. not to bring Dr. Seuss back, but it's one of those things. Don't be sad because it's gone. Be happy because it happened. That's exactly right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, you're traveling next week, I suspect. Um, uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, anything traveling. Else I mean, you know, know I've got uh, I've got some speeches lined up, some personal things. We're we're hitting. I I travel a lot in my day, and October might be my busiest month that I've ever had, which is wow. going to be right. nuts. And by the way, it's not all work stuff. It's a combination yeah. of. I think I have four keynotes that I'm doing in October. Um, and then Albert's trying to see a lot of friends as well. Pam and I have made that sort of decision that we're going to try to do as many of those things as possible. Um, so that anyways, we're doing all that stuff. And of course, going to the Browns game tonight, hopefully fingers crossed they'll win. How about you? What do you got going on? (laughs) (laughs) Well, 
Um, I'm here for the next uh, couple of weeks anyway. So yeah, I I, I go to uh, marketing props B to B in the in the middle oh, of October. But other than yeah. that, you know, I'm heads down working on client stuff right now. So it's. Uh, Nice to be home, you know, from uh, from a week of content marketing world, but then, uh, you know, back to it, as it were, back to back to making the donuts. Awesome. All right. All Good right. Deal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. And, you know, we had a lot of show notes today. If you want to go see that silly article from Marketing Brew or and, you know, see the word ear holes, uh, you can get that. Of course, we we provide you with all oh, yes. those links over at our wonderful little website at this old marketing dot site. Thank you so much for all of you who submitted story ideas through the Twitter hashtag. We love those things. Keep them coming. Uh, keep them coming through email, too. We're getting them through email, so that's a lovely thing as well. Hashtag us up if you would. Hashtag this old marketing to share anything about the show that you liked. Uh, and if you didn't like the show, well, then don't tweet at all. Just, just keep it to yourself, would you? Um, and until we meet again next week, just remember, everybody, it's your story to tell. Tell it well. We'll see you next week. This old